This is an ordinary snatch Land Rover with the equivalent of a 6 kg charge underneath. And this is what's left behind. But with a modified vehicle and the same charge, watch what happens. Roger Sloman is an inventor. He began working out of his garage in Rochdale and went on to introduce carbon fibre into racing cars in the 1970s. It was only after he retired that he started looking into blast protection. After watching experiments blowing up an old Russian BRDM2, Roger spotted something that could be key to protecting the lives inside. I looked at the high-speed video of this and the first thing I noticed was that when the mine goes off, the vehicle doesn't move for a certain period of time. And it's only 10 milliseconds, 10 thousandths of a second. But it occurred to me that that was a time window in which something could be done to stop the vehicle being blown into the air. And that precipitated the, you know, the last 12 years of r and and £7 million investment to develop the system where we are now. Current blast protection focuses on V-shaped hulls, high ground clearance, heavy weight and a high centre of gravity. This means the vehicles are taller, less stable, heavy and difficult to recover. Roger believes they can protect personnel entirely from any size of mine in an ordinary type vehicle. His next round of experiments will use the Toyota Hilux, the vehicle of choice among special forces around the world. To grasp his three-part system, we should first understand the biggest threats to the people inside. Over to Roger. The first threat to the occupants of the vehicle is if the belly plate fails, in which case the high-pressure gas and heat from the mine comes into the vehicle, probably kills everybody. The second threat is the deformation of the belly plates. If the belly plate remains intact but deforms into the cabin space, then that's a serious issue. When the mine goes off, the shockwave travels through the vehicle and makes the floor vibrate so violently that it can break your legs or throw anything on the floor, heavy ammunition boxes, up in the air, which can kill you. The third threat is the acceleration of the vehicle upwards into the air. Uh, we can fracture the spine and the pelvis and the neck. And then the last thing is that if the vehicle is blown into the air, it comes crashing down to the ground, probably rolls, and that causes a lot of injuries as well. The Taliban got very good at uh, placing explosives alongside the road to tip the vehicle over into uh, canals or, or rivers. And the problem with that is that people couldn't get out because the doors were so heavy they couldn't open them. And uh, at one point, the Americans were losing more people being drowned in the vehicles and they were being killed in any other way. So what's needed is a belly plate that doesn't deform, a floor that protects from the shockwave and some way of preventing the vehicle being thrown into the air. The last problem is what Roger solved with his 10 millisecond window and a set of rockets. The linear rocket is a very special design of a rocket. You can initiate it very quickly. It delivers all its impulse very quickly all the propellant burns in 20 milliseconds and that produces a massive force on the vehicle. Somewhere around 60 to 100 tonnes of thrust for 20 milliseconds, which is just the length of time you need to counteract the main force from the mine. So the inverse rockets push the vehicle down as the blast is pushing it up, on to the belly plate. The way we stop the belly plate deforming is to add carbon fibre beams across the width of the belly plate. So we take the load from where the mine is under the centre of the vehicle out to the sides of the belly plate and into the chassis rails. And the problem of the shockwave through the floor? The active floor system activates within one millisecond of the mine exploding and it operates by firing a detonator to release a spring which pulls the whole floor down. Away so from your feet? A flat, so yeah, it just moves the whole top surface down. The testing of the systems all takes place on a range in Wales, with the next stage planned next month. But Roger keeps all his guinea pig vehicles here in his backyard. 
So this is the snatch that you used in the experiments? Yep, yeah, this is it. And uh, this is where we put the first of the linear rocket motors over the engine bay. Are the rocket motors quite inobtrusive? Are they heavy? Yeah, they're not so heavy as to actually slow the vehicle down, but they do weigh about 45 kilos. And you can see the example here of the casing. That is the rocket motor. The whole motor weighs about 45 kilos when it's assembled. But here you can see the exit slots all the way across one side of the square section tube where the FX comes out. It's not so much Super Ted and more radiator, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, well, exactly. <laughs> but it's just, it's not a normal rocket. When I first raised the possibility of this as a concept, nobody believed it could be done. Nobody believed that you could uh, generate the amount of force required in the time. Did you always believe it would work? Yes, absolutely. It's, uh, it's inevitable. <laughs> it's designed. Yes. It's pure physics. This is the issue. It's just pure physics. The MOD Money Rogers won is for more research into the carbon fibre beams in the belly plate, which he says are inexpensive at around £20,000 per vehicle and could be ready to go in as little as three months. The rockets will take more time, but the US have invested in further development and Roger has launched a crowdfunder in the hopes he can raise enough for the research needed to get this technology to market. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel.